for having all of us uh, here. Um, so as we begin the topic, uh, I have with me Vidya and Joginder. Will be uh, the, we will be discussing about uh, the AI inventions and their whether it should be uh, patentable or not patentable. And uh, to give you a brief history, I think um, the storm in the cup started somewhere in uh, 2019 when an application uh, was filed with the uh, USPTO, and this application was filed by a AI device uh, called as uh, Dabu's or DABU, uh, which was an acronym uh, 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 for an AI device. And this related to some kind of a pulse or uh, 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 light pulses which resembled brain waves. But the uniqueness about this application was that it was filed by an AI device, and the assignee of the application, uh, the patent application, was the inventor of the. AI device. Subsequently, somewhere in April 2020, uh, the USPTO refused to grant patents uh, on on uh, uh, on this application, even if it satisfied the other test of uh, patentability. And that is what uh, and the ground was that there was no legal uh, owner of the patent, as AI was not a natural person. And only as per the text of the current law, only a natural person can hold patents. And this probably started uh, while this judgment kind of settled the legal principles, but it kickstarted a much more debate, uh, wider debate in terms of the patentability of AI inventions uh, and uh, also in terms of uh, the entire debate between legal ethics and also should the present laws be amended to accommodate uh, the AI inventions and those and those related to it. Now, that is how this whole topic of debates and it's still going on. It's one of the most live debates that are going on in the technology sector. And uh, we still have to see which way it has to it will proceed. But just to give you the importance of this topic, um, AI has uh, experienced an uh, explosion due to the uh, patents have experienced an explosion due to the availability of data in computing power and given the ability to manipulate a lot of large data sets. And according to WIPO publications of 2019, the most predominant AI functional applications have been in the field of telecommunication, transportation, life and medical sciences with activity mainly in computer vision, natural language processing and speech processing and even with the uh, COVID-19 research that we all faced last year, a lot of the invention uh, and the development efforts which were related to development of the vaccine of COVID-19 was assisted by AI devices and analytics. Um, and the same publication also marked that there is an increase in patenting activity related to AI between 2013 and 16, which features uh, machine learning techniques, deep learning and deep learning having, and at the, it is growing at a rate of 175% during this period of 2013 and 16. Robotics and control methods were the fastest growing AI functional applications and aerospace and avionics and smart cities were its fastest growing application fields in terms of the large so AI inventions generally uh, can be categorized into they mostly relate to machine learning, deep learning and neural networks. And these three categories of artificial intelligence uh, would uh, be applied to a real world setting. So so the patents or the inventions would generally fall under three categories. One is a core AI invention which will involve machine learning techniques or neural networks or applications of these core AI, like, for example, computer vision, speech recognition, NLPs or natural language processing. And then the applications of the applications, like which we call commonly called as fields, like chatbots or virtual assistants or security cameras, self-driving vehicles, carbon emission monitoring, so and so forth. These are basically the fields or applications of the applications of AI. 
So in order to understand the patentability of AI, I think uh, uh, I'll just touch upon three topics, which my co-panelist will uh, dwell further on. The, the three topics in order to understand the uh, patentability of patents, one needs to understand uh, that AI related inventions is not a single invention. It's a combination of several algorithms, method, mathematical methods, and a combination or a combination of both. And, uh, and that is where the foundation of the AI lies in its algorithms and math mathematical models. And as you're all aware, in India, we have an absolute ban on patentability of algorithms and computer programs unless it produces a technical effect or technical contribution, which will be difficult to establish. And that's the section 3K, which we have been debating for quite some time. So the patentability of the AI, core AI invention has its own challenges, but nevertheless, they are patentable in certain. However, what needs to be kind of distinguished is in terms of between AI assisted inventions and AI generated inventions. While the AI assisted inventions are made with significant human interventions and then the aid of AI, uh, for example, a life science inventory or an inventor may use AI software while developing new drugs. Generally, these inventions can be protected as patents under existing law, provided they are, of course, novel and non obvious. So there is no controversy or no no challenge in terms of uh, patenting ai assisted patents because there is a human invention but i think the challenge or the entire debate starts where it is ai generated inventions and that is where the entire uh, debate on the dabu's application at uspto and epfo came in where the invention was done by the AI engine itself, and there was no human intervention. I think that is where there are a lot of questions with respect to whether a machine can enjoy the legal status of inventor or you have, and how does it become liable for patent infringement? And also the question at what point is the machine exclusively inventing without human direction? How does the machine satisfy the duty of a disclosure? Can a invention go to such an extent or can be modified at some point where the human intervention becomes negligible, right? And at that point of time, how will we distinguish between an AI machine or, say, for example, the inventor itself? These are the questions that kind of have are there in this space where in which we generally call as AI generated patents. And that is where the entire debate would lie. I would stop here and I would allow, and over to you Vidya uh, to take it forward. Yeah, thank you Anubhavji. So uh, I think we nicely came up to a logical transition because uh, the topic that today I would be speaking about is uh, the challenges that are there with respect to patenting AI innovations. But uh, before I go into that, I'd like to briefly touch upon um, why we are even looking at it. So if we were to look at the evolution of the industry age from industry 1.0 to 4.0 where we are today, what we'll see is that the foundation for patenting was laid way back in 1.0 itself. The path breaking innovations like steam engine, power looms, they were all patented. Then in 2.0, we saw innovations in mass production. In 3.0, we came to a, a situation where there was a computer in every home. But what we are dealing with today in 4.0 is we have moved from a computer in every home to literally a computer in every device. So the system has revolutionized the way we connect with each other, we exchange information. This disruption is what is a matter of, as much as a matter of pride, it also can be a matter of concern in some areas that we are trying to discuss and see how we stand today. So even though the foundation for patenting of these kind of innovations started way back in 1.0, it was during 3.0 that the European Patent Office particularly evolved this concept called as technical character, which Anubhavji also touched upon uh, just shortly before this. 
so this technical character is what is kind of the underlying principle that almost all the major jurisdictions look at in considering whether a subject matter is patent eligible or not so uh, but can we look at business away from industry so as we see this revolution in technology happening the business also has to adopt technology there is no choice it's not an option so as we adopt technology and the business sees itself thriving with this uh, digital transformation which is a buzzword today it is only fair that we also uh, allow the innovators to derive benefits from these uh, innovations and the efforts put in so that's where the question of should this be patented all these efforts that are giving us this kind of a revolutionary scenario today should they be benefited by a patent or not now if i were to broadly uh, classify the different requirements for uh, patenting ai i would look at it in four different categories one is the statutory requirement that is what is patent eligible subject matter second would be the enablement requirement that is how much of detailing do you need in a patent specification when it particularly we are talking about artificial intelligence related innovations uh, is it got to be a blueprint level of detailing or will a superficial level be sufficient the third category would be the jurisdictional requirements because today business is not confined to one particular country especially when it comes to software every uh, it spread globally so it's very important that we ensure our ip is protected globally so what are the jurisdictional requirements or constraints in this particular scenario and the fourth category of course which um, anubhav ji just touched upon is inventions by ai themselves generated by ai themselves now i'll go to each of this um, categories briefly starting with the statutory requirement so what is artificial intelligence it is nothing but a branch of computer science which tries to emulate the human mind and take it to a scalable and low cost uh, implementation so there are different kinds of techniques that are used in ai uh, the most commonly known technique is machine learning and many times we use machine learning interchangeably with ai as well but machine learning is a subset of ai so what we when we say machine learning what we mean are those statistical techniques that give that machine the ability to learn data so it doesn't have to be explicitly programmed to do something it has the ability to learn which in my opinion itself would give it a technical character because your computer is empowered to do something on its own but unfortunately that's not how the prevailing guidelines work and that is why this challenge of how to protect it comes into being another technique that we all uh, often hear is deep learning in deep learning the system mimics the activities of the neural uh, network of our brain and it tries to understand complex patterns that are available in data today and make sense of it reinforcement learning it actually deals with more goal oriented behavior and there are rewards and penalty penalties assured for uh, achieving that goal transfer learning is when we learn from a problem which is solved in one domain and that same can be applied to another domain probably a related domain so you what you inherently achieve is a uh, uh, no need for an additional training if possible so these are the different techniques that are available in ai and most commonly seen applications of these techniques are in computer vision where the system is able to analyze and understand digital images and videos natural language processing where the interactions between the computer and the human being are analyzed speech processing where you see a lot of speech uh, signals being analyzed speech synthesis related innovations predictive analytics has seen a completely different change today with uh, ai enabling uh, different determining the patterns and how uh, a future outcome or a trend can be predicted robotics where we see a lot of industrialization now dependent on robotics where the robots are programmed to interact with people and the environment in which they are installed multi agent collaboration where different models and algorithms build autonomous systems that can work seamlessly with other systems as well as human beings so having understood what the techniques and applications of uh, 
the different algorithms or AI uh, techniques are, let's uh, go further into what is technical effect. So today when we talk of any software inventions, I keep saying software because AI also ultimately is a software invention. So uh, when we look at software inventions globally, I think to a large extent, everybody would agree that in one way or another, whether explicitly defined by the law or not explicitly defined, there are at least guidelines which help you determine that you are required to assess what the technical character of that invention is, which makes that software invention eligible for a patent protection. So every invention must have a technical character. Now, the minute that program or the algorithm is implemented in a computer, it kind of gives it a technical character. But is there really a technical effect because of it having been implemented on a computer? So a, a computer program as such is not considered technical because it would inevitably make the computer perform certain operations. So to have a technical effect, what we are looking at is a interaction which goes beyond the normal interaction between the software, which is the program, and the hardware, which is the computer on which it is run. So unless we are able to see that kind of an incremental advance in interaction, we are not able to conclude that there is a technical effect which is brought about. So if you were to look at uh, an example, say an algorithm that is used for um, in a robotic system where there is some control of the robotic arm. Now algorithm per se under section 3K or its equivalence in different geographies do not allow that algorithm to be protected. But the application of that algorithm in a technical system, like say for example in a robotic system, brings about a technical effect in the form of say precision in the way the robotic arm is controlled. That kind of a technical effect is what we would like to see in order to uh, protect that invention. Now, the inherent purpose of machine learning de definitely is for the computer to learn itself. And the fundamentals of mathematics are also involved. That kind of gives it a non-technical flair when we talk of AI inventions. But the applications of these, if shown to be technical, we can consider them for uh, patent eligibility. Uh, so in a lot of uh, ways, if you see the technical effect requirements across jurisdictions for AI, it is more or less the same as it is for any other software inventions. And fortunately or unfortunately, today the kind of guidelines we have from different jurisdictions, they are all uh, related to the technical character only. What are the uh, other aspects of patent uh, patentability? Now, enablement, the second uh, category of requirements that I said, it is very important that we sufficiently disclose the invention for it to be patent eligible or patentable. The Any person skilled in the art who engages in that domain should be able to reduce that invention to practice. Now, is that really possible with AI, which is uh, generally known as a black box implementation. It may not be always straightforward because a lot of hidden layers actually evolve during training or learning. That's where probably this new concept of explainable AI, which is coming up, the emerging field in machine learning might help tomorrow with this enablement requirement. So what explainable AI actually does it, it unboxes this black box uh, decisions of AI. It provides reasons for why AI predicted something or achieved a particular decision or uh, comes to a conclusion, which today is not possible. Explainable AI is uh, working towards that effect. But the difficulty in that today uh, at the moment is that no jurisdiction has given clear guidelines on how much information uh, disclosed in the patent application is sufficient as far as AI is concerned. And is it really possible to give that kind of uh, explanation in an AI invention when you look at other inventions? It's possibly not uh, as close to that as possible. The third uh, category of requirements is the jurisdictional requirements, which also has challenges. Already in any software inventions, there are dynamically emerging different interpretations of eligibility across the globe. So some uh, jurisdiction finds something eligible for patents. Some jurisdictions may not find the same eligible for uh, patents. Now, the same challenges extends even to artificial intelligence. 
so uh, there are three types of artificial intelligence uh, the uh, situation today the kind of activities we look at today when we talk of artificial intelligence they are basically artificial narrow intelligence or ani as we call it where a task is performed intelligently the problem statement the input data is given and you get an output that there are different other types of ai like agi general intelligence and super intelligence asi general intelligence where the ai is supposed to work at par with human intelligence and super intelligence where it's supposed to exceed the human capability or cognitive abilities of a human being so when we we have challenges already today when we are talking of narrow intelligence we cannot even fathom how we can address general intelligence and super intelligence when it actually comes into being and probably we are there with the dabus um, uh, situation which anubhav ji spoke about where there were two inventions uh, for which patent applications were filed uh, in us uk europe uh the only consensus globally i would say was that all the three major jurisdictions where these patent applications were filed actually concluded that uh, an artificial uh, or a, a non natural person inventor is not acceptable that is the only consensus seen globally today uh, in all other requirements of ai we don't really have a very clear demarcation of what is globally acceptable for a ai invention but on this at least as of today we are all on the same page that it is not possible given the legal parlance today given the way the law is formulated to consider a non natural person as an inventor so there have been guidelines but all the guidelines are more targeted towards uh, technical character and the requirements and not towards enablement or any other aspects of ai now lastly touching the uh, fourth category that i mentioned about is can a non natural person be considered as an inventor this is particularly very critical when it comes to ai invention in light of dabbs which is just a tipping uh, of a uh, you know tip of the iceberg for a huge problem to evolve tomorrow so if you were to look at those two inventions that dabbs created they were uh, very different from each other so we can't even say that it did not it it was kind of trained to do similar kind of inventions it's a creative machine and one of the inventions it created was uh, it gave an optimal shape to a container which is a beverage or a food, a food container and uh, that uh, shape allowed it to be inter uh, interlock with each other without having fasteners for each of those containers so that was one kind of invention and the second invention created by that same dabbs machine was about a flickering light which develops a pattern that makes it uh, uh, it may it attracts attention in case of a uh, emergency so such a diverse concept uh, two inventions were created by that ai machine so if you were to look at it in that uh, uh, way it kind of satisfies the requirements otherwise of uh, patentability and the creator dr stephen talva actually uh, announced that uh, the ai system was the inventor but uh, is it feasible morally ethically to consider that and what are the different implications now one of the most from a patentability perspective if you see we always talk about what is the motivation for a patent for an invention uh, what is the technical problem it is solving the way these uh, dabbs inventions were portrayed it looked like there was no human in intervention at all there is no input data given there is no problem statement given it just goes about creating inventions on its own so how do we establish the motivation for an invention now again uh, when we have an invention which is applied for a patent a very important aspect for assessing patentability is considering the person skilled in the art so now in this particular case how do you assess who is the person skilled in the art and we are talking about no human intervention ai going about creating inventions on its own who qualifies as a person skilled in the art it's very difficult to justify that again because it is a black box there is a very limited information on how the information was processed and as we all know in the software domain it's very important to precisely claim what it is doing and how it is doing so in the absence of how when we call it a black box it's very difficult to compare your innovation to a prior art what qualifies as a prior art is not clear 
again if you were to look at now closely this was about the patentability part but if you were to look at ethics and uh, other issues the gdpr which is uh, very important today across the globe how do you validate the input data is data exclusivity which is very important today taken care of was there any open source or proprietary data that was taken this uh, because probably a small subset of the entire input data may have been used by the ai system which you are not aware of the source is not very clear how do you validate an output how do you know the legal implications of the output is there any transparency the minimization and retention which are the very important principles of gdpr the privacy security these are very difficult to be controlled by an uh, when it is a ai system working without any uh, human intervention again when a ai system starts working with another say ai system it would be very difficult to predict how and why certain things happen so the liabilities accountability implications they go beyond patent law it could go into copyright gdpr corporation act civil laws you name it so it's uh, given all these challenges uh, there is a need for a legislative reform because we cannot stop innovations innovations are going to happen and it is for all of us to put our thinking caps on and together work and understand what are the changes that are required to be brought about in the patent law as well as keeping in mind the ethical and moral considerations that it duly requires so those are the challenges that i would like to share with all of you over to you joginder okay. thank you thank you thank you vidya so, yeah so can i now request uh, joginder to pick up uh good morning everyone my name is joginder and i am a patent attorney with uh, computer science background i work with leg jobs ip attorneys as a partner it is my pleasure to participate in this session with such distinguished co panelist topic is this patentable uh, best practices for drafting patent applications relating to ai based inventions and the hot topic that is the inventorship issues in patenting of such inventions the technology that we are discussing today is driving key businesses starting from autonomous vehicles to medical diagnosis and advanced manufacturing this growth is fueled by the use of digitized data and ever increasing computing power in applications such as detecting patterns among billions of seemingly unrelated data points weather forecasting agriculture detection of diseases like cancer uh, epidemic predictions and uh, many industrial applications of ai according to a study by wipo there has been a ai patent boom of almost 340000 ai related patent application that have been filed globally since 1950s and over half of which have been published in last 7 years only that is why it becomes important to understand the issues relating to patenting of such inventions and the best practices across different jurisdiction to obtain patent in this uh, technical field the inventions we are talking about generally use a complex algorithm to achieve intended results and it involves a lot of software coding that is where the issues relating to patentability arise and it may vary from country to country in january 2019 the us pto published uh, patent eligibility guidelines which are applicable to computer implemented inventions including inventions applying artificial intelligence uh, for uh, coming up with an inventive concept according to these us guidelines an applicant has three opportunities to establish that a claim is a patent eligible first by establishing that a claim does not reside a judicial exception to patentability which in the context of ai is likely to be an abstract idea second by establishing that a claim does recite a uh, judicial exception nonetheless integrates that exception into a practical application and third if a claim recites a judicial exception that is not integrated into a practical application then by establishing that the claim provides an inventive concept 
that is sufficient to establish its patent eligibility. In short, uh, 35 U.S.C. 101 includes mathematical models, algorithm, and as non-patentable subject matter. But if related inventions are linked to a practical application, then they are deemed patentable in the U.S. Now coming to the EPO. On the other hand, the EPO has published updated guidelines specific to examining the AI inventions. The European guidelines say that AI and machine learning are based on computational models and algorithms such as neural networks and support vector machines and are of an abstract mathematical nature as such. However, the European guidelines also say that the specific application of these otherwise abstract models may result in an invention having sufficient technical character to be patentable as Vidya was speaking about it. The Indian position on the topic is closer to the European approach as compared to the practice in US. Therefore, an approach quite similar to the EP approach is also recommended to overcome the subject matter objections in India. That is applying the problem solution approach, showing a technical effect finally achieved by the invention and we have judicial precedents in India to support this. The latest guidelines for examination of computer-related inventions in India kind of suggest including physical constructional feature to carry out the functions of mathematical methods or steps of algorithm. And if those constructional features can be linked to individual method steps, then nothing like it. I mean, it really increases, increases the chances of allowance. Now coming to the best practices for drafting patent applications so that we can avoid such issues right from the beginning. Apart from making sure that the claims do not fall into the category of non-patentable patentable inventions, few other hurdles need to be overcome. One is the standard novelty and non-obviousness requirement. Second is the objection related to enable requirement, which Vidya has already spoken about it, but I'll just uh, bring, to you, uh, bring to your notice some more facts. Novelty, as we know, is quite uh, straightforward. What is claimed should not be disclosed in a single document, that's it. And for proving non-obviousness of a claimed invention, it is required that another document or a common general knowledge of a person skilled in the art should not really disclose the delta part of the invention with respect to a closest prior art. Even if it does, then the combinability factor needs to be looked into to check if the prior arts are just combined in the hindsight of the invention. Apart from that, such inventions also are likely to receive objections relating to insufficient disclosure or uh, enablement issues. For this, the specification must describe the essential features and concepts of the perspective of a skilled person. For instance, the EPO AIA guidelines specific, uh, specifically say that the terms such as neural network reasoning engine, support vector machine may refer to abstract model or algorithm. Therefore, it is necessary to define these terms in the specification in relation to their specific technical use in that particular invention. Most jurisdictions require that an invention should be described in a manner such that the person skilled in the art is able to practice an invention when required. This becomes really important in the case of AI inventions as they are inherently complex and there is a higher probability of necessary pieces of information being left out. To conclude, all such inventions can be patented, although many of the patent offices across the world are yet to provide specific guidelines, the general trend points towards the broad acceptability of such inventions and in any case, the application for such invention must be drafted carefully ensuring that the claims clarify the specific relationship between the computer infrastructure and the underlying concept of the invention. A lack of detail is likely to kill the patent application eventually. Most jurisdictions specify the need to describe the invention with sufficient detail. In any case, detailing is a useful practice for overcoming obviousness rejections by providing further details in the claims as and when required, because during the course of the prosecution, we can always 
narrow down the claims. However, to begin with, one can always start with a broad set of claims that can be amended during the course of the prosecution as and when required or whenever any objection is received. Now I'll be touching upon the inventorship issues. It is important to consider various roles human play in the creation, training, and use of AI system and how the standards of inventorship should apply when considering an invention made using such AI system. As of today, in a typical AI application, human humans may be involved at various stages, including creation of an AI algorithm, designing an AI system to suit a particular purpose, curating data, and training the AI system with that data, and applying the trained system to do a particular task. Already given the ability of AI systems to learn, traditional notions of inventorship can be challenged when dealing with inventing process. In the future, if not already, human involvement in the inventing process may be minimized, or we never know, it may disappear altogether. Now, whether the current law of inventorship are adequate to address such scenarios, or whether something new or different is required, that is something that really needs to be looked into. As per the current practices and the laws, an AI system is not really considered an inventor or a co-inventor of an application, nor is permitted to be named as such, even if no contribution to the invention by a natural person is identifiable. Whatever said and done in the Dabus or other AI-related cases, international harmonization regarding inventorship of inventions made using AI is definitely needed. I personally believe that an invention should not be excluded from patent protection merely because an AI contributed to the invention. The requirements for a natural person to be considered as an inventor or a co-inventor of an invention which is made using AI should not be different compared to the requirements for being considered as an in inventor of an invention made without using AI. It should be same standard. That's all I'm saying. And irrespective of whether or not AI was used in making the invention, a natural person should be considered an inventor or a co-inventor if they have made an intellectual contribution to the inventive concept of that AI-based invention. In order to foster innovation culture, uh, inventions made AI should not be excluded from the patent protection as such, regardless of whether or not there, there is sufficient contribution by a natural person to be named as an inventor, provided that there is a natural or a legal person named as an applicant. To give you some examples with respect to inventions made using AI, when can a person be considered as an inventor? I'll uh, give you some hypothetical scenarios. For example, I feel that a natural person who uses an AI algorithm to design a particular type of product or a process should be considered as an inventor or a co-inventor when the resulting invention is of the type of product or process intended by the natural person. Another example is that a natural person who designs an AI algorithm used in the making of an invention should be considered uh, as an inventor or a co-inventor depending on the person's level of contribution to the invention. If the natural person who designed the AI algorithm uh, is trying to solve a predetermined problem, which is effectively solved by the invention, then such natural person should be considered as an inventor of the invention. Mm -hmm. And if the AI algorithm was a generic AI algorithm designed without a specific problem, should not be considered as an inventor, absent another uh, intellectual contribution to the inventor concept. We were to uh, a natural person who selects data or a data source for training an AI algorithm can be considered as an inventor uh, of an invention made using AI algorithm. If the data or data source that are selected with the purpose of solving a predetermined problem which is effectively solved by the invention. In such cases, they can be considered as an inventor. 
a natural person who selects or goes for input to a trained AI algorithm should be considered as an inventor for the invention made, made using AI algorithm. If that data or data source are generated or selected with the purpose of solving a predetermined problem and the invention effectively solves that problem. A natural person who recognizes that an output should be considered as an inventor or a co-inventor of such an invention. Uh, my, my final uh, word about this is that, uh, let's see, the technology today is major driver in any business. The trio of uh, IoT, Internet of Things, Big Data, and Artificial Intelligence is going to and bring revolution in a classical sense. The big things are still to come. As we are still very much in the early stages of finding out the relationship between the big data, IoT, and AI. And there is still a lot to come from this tech trinity. Advances are being made continuously. And this is going to benefit the businesses and our daily lives. That's it from my side. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Now I'll uh, request Mr. Ajay to take it over. And share his views. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think in between there were some vo uh, voice gaps, maybe because of the Wi-Fi problem. So all these speakers are uh, requested to have their Wi-Fi connectivity, you know, uh, very strong. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joginder. Uh, wonderful. So Ajay, yeah. Ajay, you are on mute. Yeah. No, no, not on mute, but uh, some voice was. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Ah, so they go, huh? please. Uh, Ajay, please uh, wait for some time. Uh, there is some connectivity issue. Uh, our admin is looking at it. One second. Eh? Your voice is not coming. You, you please try it again if it is coming. Yeah, we are unable to hear. Ajay, you may have to give permission to your system yeah. to use your yeah, mic have, have, and camera. Live, have, you have to be on live. Press the live button. Ajay, you can probably log off and log in and give the access to your microphone. So while Ajay joins, maybe uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, with sure, your sure. permission, uh, Mr. Agarwal, I was no, just... Uh, I, I would rather uh, love and uh, you know uh, like it because <laughs> uh, very, very interesting issues have been thrown. I was just thinking that with the uh, so much of collective wisdom we have, so whether we could come out with some uh, very good uh, publication because Institute of International Trade can take the drive, and uh, we can do the editing aspect, but if we can, you know, because we have some other material also uh, during the last uh, two conferences on AI. So if somebody can, you know, take initiative, we can come out with some publication uh, on AI, which is, which is a very uh, hot topic. And we have some foreign authors also. So uh, uh, if Vidya and uh, Anubo Jogendra uh, all together can take a drive, if you can, uh, you know, uh, write something on it, then we can, you know, publish it and make it more useful uh, at global level. It was such a uh, hot issue. Everybody would like to know much about it. And the issues are so much, so many uh, controversial issues. Now, the basic issue is non-natural person. So 
I think some uh, legal changes are also because technology moves faster than the law. I had participated in one uh, debate organized by you know uh, National uh, Law School Bangalore, where the issue was uh, the you know the balance between the law and the technology. So the technology moves much faster. So the law is unable to keep pace with it. <laughs> so please. <laughs> So, Mr. Agarwal, you touched the very heart of the issue, actually, and obviously, these issues are so relevant for India because India is at the for forefront of technology, and and there is a large base of uh, 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 IT and IT-based services, and obviously, the more emerging ones on IoT and AI, which is so, so relevant. What is the intervention you are talking about? मैंने तो प्रधानमंत्री मोदी को सबको ये कहा है कि भाई इंडिया को अगर वैभवशाली शक्तिशाली समृद्धशाली राष्ट्र बनना है तो इंडिया के पास में दो ही तीन चीजें हैं एक है आईपी एक है आईटी और एक है फार्मा ये तीनों को कंबाइन करके अगर हम चलें तो मेरी समझ में इंडिया की जो इकोनॉमी अभी थ्री ट्रिलियन के आसपास मोदी जी फाइव ट्रिलियन बोल रहे हैं मैं बोल रहा हूँ टेन ट्रिलियन भी हमारे लिए बहुत आसान है वेरी ट्रू सर वेरी ट्रू दिस इज दिस इज हाउ फॉर्मूला ऑलरेडी we are seeing that india is at the forefront oh, of yeah. vaccination yeah. development and uh, we are the suppliers to many of the countries yeah, in the world one mute myself yes hi ajay welcome back yeah thank you can you hear me now oh yeah 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 very much yes we can hear you please okay. go ahead yeah. yeah arjun please yeah yeah just uh, uh, sorry for but then you know uh, there are a lot of problems yeah. and uh, we have to solve them artificial intelligence we have to overcome this problem yeah <laughs> just give me a second yeah from the point i think my fellow panelist has very well uh, you know described everything so you know not much to tell from that point of view from you know anmol ji has started from very well uh, you know telling uh, about the you know ai current structures and uh, you know the issues everything then vidya has taken up uh, the technical part and all the challenges everything very well then joginder took us to you know basically from the patentability or uh, you know issues and everything uh, let me try to become an devil advocate and try to answer all those questions uh, which has been taken up my fellow panelists because uh, nothing much has left to add now so let's start you know uh, of course uh, Uh, as anubhavji speaks about that uh, ai related inventions and ai generated inventions so for the time being uh, let's put it in this way this era is basically now related to the ai related inventions and maybe 30 years from now the way in which we are moving ahead there will be a complete era where will be totally the ai generated inventions so that doesn't mean that we should not look at them right now and should not start working towards them in fact i'll start with one thing is that that uh, as specifically i'll tell you a little difference between the law and the practice as far as the european patent office is concerned i'm just taking an example they are saying that if you acknowledge an, a technical character and if there is a, any technical means in available in the claimed invention subject matter then it means your condition of uh, you know having any uh, you know any computer or a device will fulfill that uh, uh, the means of the presence of any technical uh, uh, you know device or whatever in the claim and should go ahead but in practicality they ask us more than that so let me start with the uh, one thing that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know starting with that uh, the human related uh, you know the ai related and the ai generated so it's all depend upon the you know how much human contribution it depends so the on one side if you can see the human intervention keep on increasing the standard of patentability the requirement of patentability in terms of specification as well as the standard of examination will continue to change so we cannot keep a same standard thing now let's come to the question of uh, like uh, vidya was saying uh you know starting from the novelty uh you know first and then later on obviousness then let's take the novelty question here so in case of and i'm just now talking about the ai generated stuff now i'm not going into the ai related stuff like in ai generated stuff if we are saying that how we you know uh, judge the novelty there so we can say that 
it's very difficult to say that the same algorithm which has been used uh, will be having you know used in some different ways or different manner will have some change so it will be easy i will say even from the today standard uh, it will be very easy to pass on the novelty test for such kind of algorithm per se because the uh, you know uh, the changes will be very less and you can always show the outcome and in outcome you can always show the difference you can always show the efficacy and then you can you know move ahead and say okay this is uh, no but when the same or similar kind of uh, algorithms are already available and when they are coming into the use in the different fields and different way uh, the taboo like now you know the ksr will be uh, will be now revisited and it will now be bring more and more again uh, different classes or you know you can say different technology into the picture because ai is a multidisciplinary thing it is not just a a computer it, it is maybe used in a computer but it will be used across the technologies so its various uses uh, and various things you know maybe in one technology can be taken to challenge the novelty on the other side now let's come to the second part of the obviousness of course the standard of obviousness for a human and and for a machine cannot be same there is no doubt about that they are to be different now how much different they are and what can be the standards so in this case if somebody says we require a person skill in the art so can't we say a machine skilled in the art and can't we compare the output of different algorithms or different machines with the output of that particular machine so we will apply but we will say not person skill in the art but we will say the machine skill in the art so for those yeah. machine skill in the art what they are doing and how they are doing second and now i come to uh, the third part basically here the most important part is we call it the industrial applicability when humans are inventor industrial applicability is the third term which is very least debated or objected by the patent office but i invite you when the ai generated inventions will come industrial applicability will be the most debated point uh, during the examination and the reason being is that because till we maintain that character that computer program per se or algorithm are not patentable it has to be used with a practical use and all everything what we talked about of uh, the technical character transformation technical effect uh, or uh, abstract theory practical use uh, or whatever we say that will only be uh, construed evaluated in terms of its use and its outcome and comparison where there we can only show the inventive step even in terms of human intervention some human intervention large human intervention no human intervention but it will always be a comparable stuff at that time so that now you vidya has uh, rightly put in all those uh, of black box uh, you know things in drafting and everything it's all depend upon how a you know applicant or inventor look where the invention lies because invention if if i start with a simple thing that if somebody has uh, come up with an algorithm then obviously that algorithm per se is not a patentable subject matter so the th the story ends there but after that when it has been you know utilized somebody will transform something with the help of that algorithm somebody will do some changes in that algorithm somebody will combine two or three algorithm somebody will create or change in the data a particular data stream is available of course but then somebody will say okay i am using it in a some particular model that is also known but this particular data stream is not uh, you know can be cannot be used in particular model so either i have to do some changes in the model or i have to do some changes in the data or i have to combine some more other uh, models which are already known and i will make a sequence because my output and the benefits are in my hindsight keeping them in my mind i will keep on doing all those activities and in that way the person who is doing it will have a more right over the person who has created those uh, you know models or the data or you know all these activities done by so the person who is doing that transformation or the machine who is doing the transformation or the first person who put the precursor in this machine to do those kind of transformation will have their first right but obviously it is not easy said than done 
it will have a lot of thinking involved in that but this is how we will move from that point of view now when it comes to the uh, to the point where how will we describe the specification very big thing of course uh, because whatever we uh, the general rules of patentability will not going to change that i will claim something either which i don't disclose or i will get the benefit of the monopoly which i have never told to the public at large or i will say that i'll keep something hidden there and uh, ultimately i am enjoying the monopoly and making it an evergreen thing so i'm not going and talking towards 3d but maybe at the end i will bring some 3d here although i am not a pharma person basically i am a mechanical person and talking about computers but uh, 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 let's move into that drafting portion say for example if somebody is starting with the, the improvement and modification of the algorithm that person can put that algorithm in that specification and specifically say there okay these are the modification which i am carrying out the algorithm then and there but then that is not a patentable subject matter but then because of that changes that person has done in the algorithm that person can always put the use that here the use i have put in here the things i have put in in perspective of you know the models the combination of the models or i have uh, you know for example something was already done by a supervised learning but now i am just using an unsupervised learning and only doing the clustering and for example further i am reducing the dimensionalities of the data and i'm choosing in one particular data uh, or one feature of that dimensionality and using a reinforcement learning to make it a online thing because once we use that reinforcement learning uh, you know it can make the things very quickly you know the input is going and output is coming and making it a real time uh, that will make my invention more smarter and these are particular models where i always keep on eye and give me the output so i am working with an a fintech company you can imagine that we are doing more than 80 billion of transaction at 45 million locations in the world so for example i am taking a simple very example that uh, the biggest uh, problem pardon 45 million locations yes 45 million locations oh. so basically you can imagine our that uh, our condition that uh, we have we, we have a bandwidth and we have to carry out the maximum transaction because where there are our revenue lies but then we have to identify that no transaction should be a, a fraud transaction and each and every transaction should be in a genuine one and the biggest problem and the biggest uh, our our competitor is not visa or american express our competitor are two one is cash and second is the non confidence of the people on the digital system so we have to once we obtain the uh, confidence of the people on the digital systems obviously we will able to defeat the cash also and later on we will see uh, the visa and the american express you know they are part of it for the time so anyway uh, the point i am making here is that commodity for you know speaking so much on the digital world digitalization yeah of course digital india so digital india uh, you know this is uh, basically for company like us uh, you know the things are very good of course the current regime has and uh, we are moving on and uh, you know some talks are going on we can build making more and more platforms and uh, you know making things more easier and uh, you know reducing all those costs but let me come back to you know sir where we were so for example we will choose one cardinality and say location and we know that a particular card has been used in delhi say at the 9 pm and suddenly in the night at 3 am that card details have been used somewhere in canada so we have devised all those algorithm and put in a model and we made that location specific so we very really know that if somebody has done a transaction in delhi for example it's not possible within that fellow to go within 6 hours uh, to canada until that person is a, a you know a secret agent of any country and traveling in a, some supersonic jets even then i believe you know uh, all those rafals and uh, f35s they will be taking some times because they don't contain so much of fuel that and they can fly non stop from delhi to toronto or something obviously that transaction can be a fraud transaction we can cut up and stop that transaction and uh, you know inform the genuine uh, the card holder that 
we stop this and uh, these are the considered to be uh, and reported to those banks परंतु इसमें ऐड कर रहा हूँ कि आप ईशावासी उपनिषद में देखेंगे तो वहाँ आपके चौथे या पांचवे श्लोक में ईश्वर के बारे में लिखा है मनसा जवीयो वो मन से भी कुछ गति से चलता है तो ये जो हमारी जो चेतना है ना ये मन से भी ज्यादा कुछ गति से पीछे चलती है तो आप पहुंचे भी उससे पहले तो वहाँ मौजूद है वो तो अफकोर्स we have lot of uh, you know what i should say is uh, uh, information and knowledge hidden in our ancient texts and uh, i try to read some but not most of them but avid reader of gita obviously and believe in them mm-hmm. and uh, try to read uh, all of upanishads and vedas whenever time left uh, you know we have but nevertheless i believe that you know a uh, lot of information hidden information and which can transform our lives are available here so moving on uh, you know uh, so let like that kind of algorithm and work we are doing and we require that kind of uh, models to detect and stop such kind of a fraud this is just an example i am giving you so when i will be drafting such kind of application obviously here ap- apart from the workflows uh, giving those uh, you know uh, the charts and everything in the drawing and description here i have to tell okay not only that okay what are the models i have selected or even if i have generated a new model where i have used all those cardinal features how i have chosen to go ahead and choose a location as a feature uh, by you know, you know uh, reducing the dimensionality whether i am using the vectors or i am using the nodes or i how i am combining the information and then you know evaluating it somewhere and then ultimately getting the output rejecting some score and if that score is less than that then obviously we mark that transaction so for example as an fraudulent and if it is above that then we can mark that as an in a valid transaction so that kind of information has to be there but if i keep something hidden there and when a person will come into the picture to you know implement that invention and beware of opposition uh, uh, and you know uh, then uh with all kind of litigation there that if the invention will not be carried out a person or even a by machine then you know uh, our monopoly will be in danger so all those hidden layers basically uh here if that invention cannot be carried out and the problem here in uh, uh, or you can say advantage in M, uh, mi is that machine learning is that that the hidden layers will not get you to the same output which you are uh describing so in my view in such applications at some point of time outcome may not be patentable results cannot be patentable now but in future i believe in ai generated invention since efficacy depends upon the outcome the outcome may be patentable somehow like in chemistry we protect the ranges and everything we protect all those temperatures and everything but we don't uh, and of course we don't claim in the claims the output but the whenever we are doing some process and method in the chemistry there will be a new chemical will be coming out and that basically we later on can protect as a product patent so similarly that kind of thing we can do uh, in the basis of ai also uh, uh, but obviously once uh, we you know we know that uh, at what level and what type of inventorship has to be given here i will believe the level of inventorship will come into the picture which is depending upon the human interventions and the standard of patentability as i told that it cannot be a machine uh, skilled in the art versus a human skilled in the art can never be the same of course the laws and uh, the rules cannot be the same they are to be a kind of a class apart and there will be something in uh, you know uh you can say interpolation will be there where uh, how much human intervention is there and how much is there but all, having said that i can say one thing that ultimately whatever ai is doing ai is more smarter because ai has a more power of grasping and coming to the conclusion very fasting so but ai doesn't have that thinking power for example even if ai classify everything so ai require another thing to come just to validate the first until a next thing comes it will keep it you know unchecked and that's why the precursor will always come from a human 
maybe the precursor will be very small then we can see can this be allowed to be given as invent inventorship but i believe at that time maybe we will reach to a stage we can say so now i am coming to the section 3d which is uh, you know i have spoken somewhere in some forum in europe also and that was not liked but anyway uh, uh, that is basically when we say in 3d what we are giving we are just giving the molecules and later on whatever be the use of the molecules we don't care and it can be you know for any purposes and like that here are we moving towards that if if somebody transforms and do something on algorithm per se and first you bring that algorithm per se and then use that algorithm per se for any particular use but later on that algorithm can be you know used for so many things if without modification can we keep on giving uh, the patents based on uh, just uh, mere use or of course it is very easy to change the algorithm but to some extent we will not but then whatever modification will be doing if we think that in terms of uh, you know obviousness is it uh, so within the scope of uh, uh, the machine or the person skill in the art can we apply that test there and if it is more than that of course we can have we find that there can be an inventive step and go ahead but if not can we block them so these are the all things we can think of at this point of time but this is all my thinking my views and uh, i don't know whether they are right or wrong and but this is my views as, as of today thanks great so all the three speakers have wonderfully dealt with the such a complex issue uh, artificial intelligence because uh, the technology is still moving and uh, as has been given to understand that uh, for last five decades we are with ai but in the last seven years only it is moving very fast and it's the era of uh, ai boom so i think uh, uh, now we can move on to the question answer session uh, or the kindly among themselves also can have some interaction we have uh, you know this session will be till uh, 11:45 so we still have you know uh, 20 minutes uh, in our hand so let's use it as effective as possible so Mr. yeah uh, i i think uh, one it, this was a very very interesting discussion as you resonated and i think uh, mm, there were very divergent views that came out on this uh, important topic right but only with convergence <laughs> <laughs> yes and there was a convergence because all of us felt that yes uh, inventions cannot stop as uh, vidya said and uh, jogender resonated that yes uh, we have to find a way out to kind of uh, uh, have patents on the uh, on the uh, ai generated uh, uh, inventions and uh, ajay suggested some uh, new standards of obviousness as compared to machines or a separate regime altogether but all of us are in very violent agreement that there has to be a, a system of uh, uh, doing it okay. but this question is not limited to only the legal issues i think there is a very basic ethical issue that is involved in uh, this entire debate which goes beyond the legal principles that have been laid because we can at some point since the laws are created by humans and have been practiced by lawyers uh, it can be changed to suit uh, the special circumstances or we can create special molds to fit in the emerging technologies uh, as we have seen in the past but what gives me shudders is basically can are we saying that machines can be inventors now because over a period of time with the intelligence as it we see it developing and the kind of complexity the machine learning will always be ahead it will it will be always able to think more in a more sophisticated way and in a faster way than humans can and then that line between humans and machine is going to blur at some point of time right and that is the point that gives me a lot of uh, uh, fear that do we do we then at that point of time allow machines to be the inventor and own these patents uh, and that is where the ethical question starts right because at this point where i stand now and i see that era when we will have machines owning some of the life mission critical uh, inventions 
what ethical issues will come out right and i would definitely want to know the views of this panel and yourself in terms of what do you think on this issue on the ethical since you quoted the mahabharata and the geeta here so what what is that ethical moral question that comes with machines owning the owning the patents or inventions uh. मेरी समझ में अनुभव जी ने जो बातें कही है दीज आर ऑल वेरी गुड किंतु वन वन पॉइंट आई विल डिफर ऑलवेज दैट मशीन कैन नेवर ओवरटेक दी ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस दिस इज माय फीलिंग ह्यूमन इंटेलिजेंस विल ऑलवेज विवेल ओवर द मशीन एंड एस आई थिंक समबडी सेड जोगिंदर और अजय दैट द थिंकिंग पावर the power of thinking that is the only uniqueness a human uh, being has and machine will never have the power of thinking so drashta aur srashta ki baat jab hum karte hain a visionary and a creator so that kind of creativity well machine to uh, isha vashya upanishad mein bhi baat aati hai ki isha vashyam idam sarvam yat kinch jagat kyam jagat yani jad aur chetan sabhi ishwar ki srishti hai तो मैं चाहता हूं कि अभी क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन में ऑडियंस को थोड़ा सा अपॉर्चुनिटी दें एंड द हाउस इज ओपन फॉर द ऑडियंस टू पुट देयर क्वेश्चंस सो ज्यादा ज्यादा क्रिएटिव क्वेश्चंस आए मैं चाहता हूं सो ओवर टू द ऑडियंस एंड फॉर द क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन बिल्कुल बिल्कुल तो तो सर आपकी बात से ऐसा एक जरूर कोई प्रश्न उठता है कि do we even require patentability on <laughs> generated patents kyunki sab kuch to srishti hai ye already existing hai to why do we need dekhe, this patent rights dekhiye <laughs> ye dekhiye you see ye ye to ek ye to ek general baatein hain kyunki ye dekhiye jab kabhi vikas ki baat hoti hai to usme hamare shastro mein kaha hai abhyuday nishreyas yani spirituality and materiality दोनों साथ साथ चलेंगे तो उसमें कुछ लोग ऐसे रहेंगे हमेशा जो ओपन सोर्स की बात करेंगे और लोगों के कल्याण के लिए क्योंकि एक स्टेज ऐसी आती है दो तरह के लोग हैं ना कि एक तो है सन्यासी जो सिर्फ लोक संग्रह के लिए लोक कल्याण के लिए काम करेंगे और दूसरे जो हैं वो गृहस्थ जीवन वाले वो निष्काम कर्मियों की बात तो है कि साथ साथ उनको जो है गृहस्थी भी चलानी होती है तो ये मिक्स चलेगा जी ये मिक्स जो है हमेशा चलता रहेगा जिंदगी में कुछ मेटरिलिटी और कुछ स्पिरिचुअलिटी दोनों को साथ साथ में लेकर के जिंदगी चलती रहेगी ऐसा मैं समझता हूं कि अभ्युदय निश्रेयस कि ये जो है सात्विक और राजसिक दोनों ही मिलकर के चलेंगे और ऐसे ही प्रकृति बनी हुई है तो ओवर टू दी ऑडियंस का कोई सवाल हो उसको आप लोग टेकअप कर सकते हैं किस नाम से देखिए हैंड्स रेज हुए हैं तो आई थिंक those who wants to uh, uh, raise any question can raise hands and they can move on audience ke prashn through chat aa rahe hain ki kaise hum bhi kuch dekh pa rahe hain yes i can now hear you i got disconnected in between now i'm back ye prashn hai ki there is an invention that involves as ai tool linked to a medical device or kit for example the kit analyzes a uh, human sample and provides an image which is fed to an app that shows an outcome or probability of developing a disease is such an ai assisted invention patentable in india since it may attract 3k and 3i issues 3l sorry so um uh while i'm not a pharma or a, uh, a medical devices specialist but at a general level uh, i think we did discuss that ai assisted uh, uh, patents are generally acceptable and can be patented uh, uh, under the existing laws uh, so i think at a general level that is the answer but uh, ajay ji who uh, probably anyone who in this panel who is specialist in the pharma side or medical devices side can comment more yeah um, basically you know uh, we have to always see where the invention lies and the invention lies uh, you know basically uh, lot of machines are been made we are using 
we are using i'm i'm just just giving a hypothetical situation for example our heart is you know beating and we do all, all those ecg and all those gra graphics and we know that how it is working somehow if i put an uh, uh, that uh, information and i put that how my ecg is working and somehow uh, i can say that like i can get the logs and can predict something if i am making some machine and fit something there in an instrument and put there that okay for two, two hours or three hours over the different period of time all those information can be taken generated and based on that uh, and and uh, you know based on that my age and my health conditions and everything based on other people's data and information available they can suggest yes okay what is your particular condition and what can be the time and the stage or the age or the year where you know i can have uh, i need some medical assistance or some improvements i have to carry out if i make such kind of a, 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 a you know predictive analysis uh, based algorithm put in, in a device and put it on the heart and giving to the doctors basically here my innovation lies in that device so it will not be considered and coming under uh, you know uh, for method of treatment or nothing because this is basically giving that information to the doctors now doctors get that information in a much better way to assess and even they have been given for example i take another thing like uh, most of the people used to get that stent and the stent basically is the widening of the arteries so now somebody can say okay right now uh, uh, doctor always say okay they put some parameters that okay if somebody has got 60% block 70% blocks they can use some particular medicine to get away but it goes more than that so they can always know if i give that predictive uh, algorithm there and which can say okay the kind of food i am taking the kind of exercise i am taking the kind of environment i am living and my current age is something like this and, uh, and what type of job i am doing based on that they can say okay this person may require something after 5 or 6 years not now and can put somewhere in my medical records and say that okay uh, somebody even if the doctor is not somebody else can say okay that was the findings at that time such kind of device will be considered as a pure uh, you know medical device and will be given a patent from that that will not considered into any kind of therapeutic effect or will not be considered as a diagnostic or a method of treatment and will not be there section 3 k here will uh, you know of course we will get the objection from the patent office that is their job to object obviously and our job is to answer them and basically what we are we can say is that we are made a predictable device up to now whatever device are only giving you a diagnostic features where doctor can put a device and can check and take the decision of its own but now we are making something predictively where we can very much uh, say that okay what and when such things will be required so that feature of uh, you know predictability was not there in any device earlier and for that the patent should be granted to this device good एक तो मैं बताना चाहता हूँ कि ये सेशन 11:45 तक था किंतु हमारे पास समय है नेटवर्किंग के लिए 11:45 टू 1 तो हम नेटवर्किंग को 12 टू 1 कर सकते हैं इस सेशन को हम बारह बजे तक पहुंच सकते हैं जिससे क्या है कि ऑडियंस को प्रश्न करने का ज्यादा ज्यादा हो तो 15 मिनट का आपका परमिशन लेकर के मैं इस सेशन को एक्सटेंड करना चाहूंगा सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज यू कैन एन रेस्ट Um, no. और अभी तो uh, कोई प्रश्न तो नहीं दिख रहा है अजय पनवर जी आप जरा इस पर भी हाईलाइट कर सकते हैं क्या थ्री uh, एन uh, के ऊपर में ए मेयर स्कीम और रूल और मेथड ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग मेंटल एक्ट और मेथड ऑफ प्लेइंग गेम बिकॉज इन वन ऑफ अवर यू नो जी आई पी सी कॉन्फ्रेंस द क्वेश्चन अबाउट दिस पैटेंटेबिलिटी फॉर आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस was also uh, not only uh, limited to 3k it was also uh, about uh, 3m so 3m par kuch thodi highlight kar sakte hain yes sir uh, let me try uh, in section 3m you can say oh, you uh, know, uh, generalist can also give their views yes okay so if anybody wants to take try can can try obviously you are all welcome no no aap pehle okay so uh, uh, so in 3m basically uh, you know sir uh, playing games and all that stuff whenever we say that there is some kind of a speculation whenever we say there is some kind of a speculation there always a inhibitant to patentability 
because the speculation is uh, never can be uh, considered as a innovation or patentability so all those mental activities like uh, why mathematical formulas have been banned because they say that there are obvious inherent relationship which are existing although you are first to discover that but ultimately the thing which can be done on the piece of a paper which can be done with the help of a calculator obviously you are not going in and increasing the scope or the uh, you know calculatability of the calculator it means you are already working and using already existing information or knowledge which is there and then you are finding out something that will be considered as a, an a mental activity and all these scheme of things playing games and everything they are basically because for them there is set rules and procedures are already existing we are merely following those rules and procedures and uh, and doing some activities so that can, cannot be considered as patentability because the ingenuity of the human intelligence should always be there as a factor for considering the inventive step or i can say in ai the ingenuity of a behavior of the efficacy of the machine should always be a factor in considering the inventive step if that ingenuity and efficacy will not be there section 3m will be going to come into the picture because it is just mere using already existing information in within the preview of the knowledge without showing any unexpected result and that's why 3m will come into the picture and 3m will bar all these activities mm -hmm. like even if i make some log 10 multiply by x raised to power 15 multiply by at uh, 9 raised to power 35 multiply by something but we have already made super computers for them i will just give values to them of course the calculations are very very big uh, the only difference is that we already applied that knowledge and we always have those super uh, computers are there which are working and can give me all those uh, mathematical relationship only thing is as a human also if i start doing them it will take me a lot of effort but i can also do that same thing with the help of pen and paper on a piece of paper but the moment here comes the quantum theory the quantum theory will come into the picture and start working with the super computers then the things will go out of the 3m because here applicability of a quantum theory will be utilized to increase the efficacy of the super computers that thing will come out of the preview of uh, 3m but maybe we have to dealt with in the form of 3k Yeah. I would like to add to what Ajay said. Uh, 3M is basically for objecting to mere schemes, mental acts, or method of playing games. So uh, when we are talking about AI inventions, uh, the moment we speak about AI inventions, we are talking about involvement of a machine. Right? So that is where the 3M definitely goes out of the picture because we are not talking about a mental act. ai based invention cannot be uh, done mentally so a machine will be involved and that is alone sufficient to overcome the objection relating to section 3n that's all whether you were saying something yeah yeah so i have in my experience seen some some kind of objections when you use expressions in your claims like evaluating there i'd like to get back to what uh, ajay was saying about speculation so that is a very important aspect because claims are supposed to be definite you really need to know what it is you are claiming there is no scope or room for speculation so when you use words like evaluation that's when you're bringing subjectivity into it there is no clarity so the minute you are able to defend uh, the uh, objection saying that this is not a subjective evaluation but the computer is able to by means of whatever method or system configuration you have you claim to be your innovation if you are able to show that the outcome is very objective for a problem which otherwise is subjective then even if it is rule based like when you say mere scheme what we are talking about is say the human intellect develop certain rules which were prefixed to the system so that's when you commonly see this objections that it is merely a rule based engine or it is predefined and given to the system the system intelligence doesn't come out there is no 
uh, advancement in the way the system operates because it's merely executing what it has been told to do. So and in such situations, there is one very uh, a landmark decision, I would say, uh, which is macro versus Bandai, where a rule based engine was granted after a lot of appeal. And there the learning we can take is even though it is rule based, the argument was that normally it is done by a human being. Uh, it's related to the field of animation where lip syncing is animated. So the argument was normally if a human being was to do it, why is this still not mere automation of what a human being does? It is rule based. So why is not just use of schemes? It's because those rules do not map to the way a human being would be performing that lip syncing operation. So that is the difference that even if there is a rule base, I have not seen any other case law in my experience that kind of validates or proves that a rule based engine is still innovative. But this is one example I have seen. So whenever I personally come across inventions which are like this, I try to think from that angle and see that can we show that there is an objectivity in the outcome of the computer? It's not subjective. So taking out speculation, as Ajay said, is a very important aspect when it comes to overcoming 3M. That's all from my side. OK, Anubhavji, uh, in the beginning, you mentioned that AI-related inventions could bring uh, you know, uh, revolution or is bringing a revolution in the field of transportation and telecommunication. In Tamil Nadu, uh, in uh, Chennai, we had one uh, conference uh, dedicated on artificial intelligence and automobiles. I think, Joginder, you were one of the speakers there. Joginder, were you a speaker there? Or oh, maybe, yeah. So, could you throw some light on that uh, AI, like driverless vehicles and, uh, you know, automatic uh, automatic vehicles and etc. So, how do you see the automobile industry uh, uh, with the uh, AI related inventions? Yeah, Mr. Agarwal, um, see uh, the whole world of uh, autonomous vehicles or it even starts with uh, what we call as the connected world, right? That's, uh, that's how these things fit in. And there are various elements of a connected world when we call them as smart cities or various applications which have their roots into the AI. Uh, 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 and that is where this entire subject becomes uh, very important. So coming down to kind of when we say we will be living in an AI or a connected world, it will be powered by uh, advanced analytics or AI based systems uh, to a large extent uh, uh, because it will not be possible for humans to manage the complexity of those systems and the various data sets that those systems will interplay to give the outcomes that will help in decision making by the users, right? So the interfaces at the back end will be based heavily on AI. Now, coming to the specific uh, 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 challenge of a driverless vehicle or a autonomous vehicle, there are two or three elements in an autonomous vehicle that uh, really make it autonomous. One is uh, basically the connectivity uh, uh, to the backend systems like geospatial, uh, 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 the, uh, the maps or the geospatial uh, uh, statistics uh, uh, that the pro system processes. Second is the sensitization or the receiving of it. And the last is basically synthesizing it to take decisions either by the machine or the user instantaneously. I think that is where the AI based systems come in quite a bit, but it also throws a number of challenges at this point of time. Say, for example, if there is an accident, who will be responsible for the accident if the decision was taken by the uh, machine and there was no human intervention. Now, obviously, the ownership of the vehicle is not challenged here, but it is basically the decision of the uh, of the machine and then entering into some kind of an incident is what is being challenged here. And but that I, is exactly... I was, I was also told in some of the uh, conference that uh, with a driverless vehicle in AI, the chances of or uh, the accidents will not be there at all. And therefore, yes. all the ambulances will lose business, all the emergency hospitals will, uh, you know, uh, emergency ward will, all the insurance companies will lose, lose business. This is a kind of... Uh, you know, disruptive innovation is going to affect the entire automobile and the automobile related uh, 
uh, you know accident and other uh, issues uh, absolutely uh, uh, dr agarwal that is a scenario that is being painted that because everything will be rule based and obviously like for example the whole definition of bumper to bumper traffic is going to change because it will be regulated by the machine right. and we will have actual distances and the chances of uh, vehicles colliding with each other uh, uh, will be minimized but that we are talking about in a ideal scenario right even right, right now uh, uh, machines the way the development has the level of advancement that we have received or achieved at this point of time i think there is a long way to go before we can kind of safely claim that there will be no accidents right because there we are still in the uh, 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 stage of developing lot of systems and training our ai systems in terms of these complex so uh, thirty years from now yes so so the outcomes obviously those are the scenarios that you alluded to are ideal scenarios where everyone we are assuming will be using a driverless vehicle and everything will be controlled by the ai systems which are advanced enough to take decisions to eliminate accidents but in a real life situation i don't think i can imagine a world where everyone will be using a driverless vehicle uh, so soon in the near future and i think there will be still people who would who 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 would not be in that kind of a system uh and which can create problems or we will have to develop alternate systems like what ajay mentioned for ai that way we will may have to develop separate standards for these kind of uh, uh, vehicles and people may have uh, advantages now also in terms of will the calibration of all the systems be the same now in a competitive world if all the systems are talking to each other uh like let me take example of a stock exchange which is all database at this time but everyone who gets into those systems everyone has access to those systems but every person makes a different loss or a profit right based on the decision and the information available to it so similarly in that kind of a world we have to imagine a system where everyone is plugged into a similar system and everyone has equal access to uh, the information so i think yes in ideal scenario what you are saying can is what it will be but how we see it in the near future is more of a mixed world and that is where we are seeing the evolution of uh, uh, the uh, uh, the connected cars say for example even the latest models of tesla they are they are only adding the features one by one say drive uh, the lane changing features are are, are being added the the auto stop features are being added these are some of the slow evolution in terms of till we reach that ideal state uh, okay. uh, i think that is what i would how i would see the whole evolution going but it will be definitely based on heavily on the data analytics and ai based system yeah i think jogender has something more to say but i i am overloading him and uh, other panelists with another one question about <laughs> the ai based law because if you want if you are doing a business in this global world now the european union the eea particularly in article 53 of eea they have something on the pro competition and anti competition and they are very really stringent rule of penalty so how uh, this artificial intelligence and the technology is going to hit with monopolization versus the competition so somebody can uh, throw some light on that Doctor, uh, yeah, go ahead, Jogender. You wanted to add? Uh, yeah, Jogender wanted to add something on the previous question. Jogender, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, talking about autonomous vehicle, I think they, they are pretty much uh, same in the same category as the other invention. uh in terms of patentability i uh, most of them are being uh, find, found to be patentable uh the main issue is how you are controlling the autonomous vehicle there are a lot of technology involved there i mean it is a very complex thing in terms of technology uh software is involved there there is algorithm that then you have to control the entire car and then ge geospatial uh, coordinates are being used 
and you, you have to make sure that it is safe and so there, there are so many parameters involved uh, there and uh, most of the patent activity relating to ai is actually coming from autonomous vehicle and the uh, big players like google and many many other uh, car manufacturers or in fact the software companies are filing a lot of patent applications and uh, this is one area where which is really helping in this uh, ai patent boom absolutely jaginder in addition to uh, the anti trust uh, question that mr agarwal said i think uh, we touched upon the entire data privacy uh, 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 issues as well which are involved in that because once you start mapping each of the vehicle uh, uh, there is lot of information you can get about the person itself yes. right that comes back to that very question that uh, of of speakable ai patentable or patents that we are talking about that do we now also get to the data sets or the training materials on which these ai systems are being trained on will that be also a subject of disclosure uh, uh, so i think si similar to this the entire trust issue mr agarwal that you raised i think right now uh, those are the issues that we are still uh, uh, grappling with that what will be the effect of uh, that kind of a applicability say for example in a car industry if we are slowly seeing that convergence happening between the competitors but it is still very slow which will allow say kind of a universalization of these systems uh, uh, we uh, so it is still we we can see that challenge but we don't see that progress being made on the ground because of the commercial reasons as of uh, that are there involved in that and also the cost associated with those inventions so everyone wants to kind of make maximum profit but if we have to have this system successful then i think there has to be a convergence of certain laws like data protection and anti trust issues that you raised very validly okay okay yeah i just want to add what anubhav ji has said i uh, like uh, you know in anti anti trust on all these competitions law like we have to remember very one thing uh, basically because we are the people belonging to the patent so we we look for monopoly and yeah, competition yeah. is just opposite to that so i'll take a very simple corollary which i used to tell my child that you know it is not to be a crime to be a bodybuilder you can be a bodybuilder of course and it cannot be a crime nobody can you know penalize you being a bodybuilder that you are strong you have a very good body but the moment you start using that body or that physical force to stop others or putting your dominance then it becomes a problem now that's the one thing so being a bodybuilder is not a problem using that force or in a illegal way to stop others is a problem so abuse of dominance now we come to the next thing the next thing is that of course uh, if you are the only service providers there is no competition law in the world where you can say no i will not be into the picture you will have to come into the picture sometimes you know if you are the first one you always have the advantage but you have a few disadvantages and the at disadvantage always counts in the competition law. but what you can do is that we can have the examples of ipms in the past and you know few other companies like microsoft so they you have to be very uh, good at your innovation cycles and of course you made one good platform and then you know that uh, since you will be coming into all these anti trust and competition law issues and you have to give the licenses to all others to keep that but you have to very quickly bring the platform number 2 and platform number 3 till all other people adapt that platform number 1 and you can still earn your revenues and you can always say that oh, look i have already been uh, been a dominant you know a dominant and i already allow everybody access in that one but that is basically kind of a basic platform and now i'm very quickly coming up to the second and third and obviously people will find the benefits out of that and they will quickly jump from the platform number 2 to platform number 2 and number 3 so these are but of course the the level of innovation the pressure on you obviously is very high so from ip strategy point of view and i'm bring that also that you need not to come with all your platforms in a very short you know when go but you have to keep them in wrap 
bring the first one very quickly make that uh, a industry specific or a standard and then come up with number 2 and number 3 with some more improved feature and try to get more business like that but of course uh, 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 per se the abuse of dominance will never be allowed because it will come to competition and uh, com if there will be no competition the innovation it will be counterproductive there will be no innovation so this is the way you know we can deal with the things but uh, of course uh, we cannot play with the rules of the law of the land and ajay you bring in a very important point of standards right i think that whole uh, whole uh, area and it's a different discussion uh, which can take uh, several hours is the whole area of standards right even we have not perfected the standard uh, uh, regime for men, uh, in many ways right uh, uh, and uh, we are talking about uh, converging technologies at a global level so that is going to bring in much more cha challenges but that probably could be one of the ways where where uh, uh, we we can find some convergence in some of these technologies yeah absolutely i was about to say that that the situation we see is particularly in the telecom sector today the abuse of dominance or uh, if you are okay to say that so that potential from all the problems we discussed today uh, that would be a next potential problem to deal with ai but even if you were to park all this aside there is one namaskar you know yes tomorrow maybe 30 years 50 years down the uh, lane there may be everybody is uh, using an autonomous car what about the person who really enjoys driving a car <laughs> there will always be that one person who would not want to fall into that category you know i was drawing somebody enjoys drawing why would i want to see an ai created art i'd rather have you tell me what you created what was your thought process what is it that you were trying to depict in that art because what an ai creates there is no emotion to it or there is no underlying thought behind it it doesn't convey anything but just some splash of colors you know so that is what would cause a mixed world and add to the challenge in standardization or anything for that matter absolutely with that i think thank you all panelists because now uh, it's 12 o'clock and uh, Uh, as I requested, we already had 15 minutes extra extension. So 11:45 was the session. So now it's 12. So uh, I can only convey very, very, uh, you know, um, uh, hearty thanks to all the panelists. And um, I think the session was uh, quite uh, wonderful and very enjoyable. Uh, you really made made the complex thing so simple. and uh, this simplification simplification process is only uh, only put through you know through the human intelligence so there has to be always a convergence between the machine intelligence and the human intelligence so this is how we keep on improving and we find the solution because basically the science, scientific inventions are to you know give, give the uh, solution for the human problems so this is how i think a uh, good combination of spiritualism science and this materialism so with all this convergence i think uh, we keep on uh, you know making the human life more uh, enjoy enjoying and uh, more creative and uh, i think this process will uh, continue so uh, again i convey my thanks and uh, i request everybody to you know continue uh, holding for uh, you know our vipc different sessions so now i can you know uh, 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 announce the uh, break for the networking uh, between 12 to 1 and we can join once again at 1 o'clock the next session will be on the pharmaceutical patent rights versus right to health so this is what would be very important in this uh, era of uh, covid uh, pandemic so uh, with this i thank you once again everybody and now over to the administrators thank you Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Thank you everyone.